What is up guys, how's it going? My name is Aram Joseph, thank you guys for checking out the video. So, I've been getting a lot of requests from some of my wholesale buyers that, um, you know, a lot of people, as you guys all already know, are working from home. So, my wholesale buyers are asking for me to have laptops, um, specifically Apple laptops, ready so that they can just buy it, sell to their own customers, whether it's in their computer shops or it's online on eBay, whatever it is. So, today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I test and prepare an Apple laptop. Specifically, I'm probably going to be doing an Apple MacBook Pro. This time I'll do a 15 inch Apple MacBook Pro. It's an A1286. Alright, see you guys there. Okay, so here is a 15 inch uh, Apple MacBook Pro. It's an A1286. Um, let me see. What is the. It's a 2010. So, one of the first things we'll be doing is just uh, opening it up and making sure that all of the hardware is in there. I already heard something loose, so that's probably the SATA cable that's proprietary to these Apple MacBooks that was loose inside. So, there's, there probably isn't a hard drive. More often than not, when I get laptops recycled, uh, the hard drive is either shred by the customer or they just take it and uh, sure enough, I end up, if uh, I end up like refurbishing the laptop, I'll end up replacing the hard drive. So let's go ahead and open it up and uh, let's see what we're working with. So there aren't any screws on this one. Okay, so there is no hard drive, but everything else relatively looks clean. We have two four gigabyte sticks of RAM. That's DDR3. So let's go ahead and turn it on to what we're working with. Once I put in a hard drive, we, we're gonna go ahead and do the Apple hardware test and see if everything's functioning okay. Okay. Let us go ahead and put in a hard drive and then we'll see what we're working with. Okay, so we have a hard drive here. Already has the brackets. This one was missing a hard drive and they did not leave the, the brackets behind. So let us go ahead and replace it. Most of the times, these computers are pretty solid. Um, I had, just, just because that's my personality, I like to, for some reason, make old technology work again and be useful, not just function. So I'll go ahead and put it to the test by using, for example, a Core 2 Duo over 10 year old laptop. I think at this point it's a 12 year old laptop. It's the original MacBook that was the unibody. I put in the SSD and I put 8 gigabytes of RAM and I would take it to school for a year and a half just because I enjoyed the fact that I got an old machine to work and it functioned just fine. So, um, sure enough with these machines they really last long. These specific models, the 15 inch from 2010 to 2011 do have all right green light that's a good sign let it go to orange that means all right that means that the, the battery is charging so I'm gonna let it charge for a, a few seconds before I try to turn it on um, typically these models the 2010 2011 15 inch Apple MacBook Pros do have a graphics issue so that was something that Apple I believe had a recall on but unfortunately they had a recall for a short period of time and it wasn't really something that was well uh, publicized so that the people who had these laptops I don't think everyone was fully aware that they could just take it in for a warranty um, but sure enough even though the laptops were uh, repaired quote unquote under warranty they still had the same problem I faced many laptops from uh, customers that dropped it off. They told me the same thing that they had Apple repair it three times, still had the same problem. So let's see what this model is. Uh, regardless, they're pretty good machines. The parts for these are a little bit less expensive to uh, replace. So I believe Apple hardware uh, test is holding down the D key. So it turns on fine, the screen looks fine. This is actually the nicer screen, it's the anti-glare screen. So this is something that will be a little bit more valuable to some customers because it's, it's outside of the norm of just like a, a glossy screen. Okay, that didn't work. I'm gonna go ahead and try something else. Okay, what I'm gonna try to do is get into the hardware test while I have my external 
um, hard drive and if that doesn't work then I'm just going to install an operating system and then try it from there okay so that did not work for the hardware test but nonetheless I will go ahead and install an operating system keyboard works fine see the backlight so uh, a little trick with the backlight um, do you see how because there's light behind me if I try to click on the backlight okay now it's working typically it won't let you do anything if there is light in the room if you cover the camera then the backlight will work because it, the camera thinks it's dark of course okay Wi-Fi is working fine Let's see what type of system this is it's a 2.66 i7 8 gigabytes of RAM the hard drive I put in there is a 500 gigabyte SATA drive it's a conventional drive see like it's not like Windows where Apple literally stops certain models from being updated period because I, I don't I, I mean this is my suspicion I'm not sure uh, why but my suspicion is that they just don't want to like a laptop for example that's already uh, pretty dependable to be used for let's say seven years eight years they would rather cut it short from being updated and then have new apps and programs that need the latest software all of a sudden put pressure on you to buy the latest computer so a lot of people like myself I use older Apple computers and um, that's just fine because I mean it, it works fine for me I, I don't need to use like Photoshop or uh, Final Cut Pro or, or some editing software the max I use is iMovie and the rest is just Microsoft Word and whatnot. Yeah, so right now what I'm doing is I'm installing uh, Lion 10.7.5 on this 2010 MacBook Pro 15 inch. It is an A1286. It has a 2.66 i7 processor with um, 8 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte conventional, uh, conventional hard drive. So right now it's just copying over the OS and then later on we'll go ahead and we'll test the hardware but for now from what I've already tested lightly the full keyboard works Wi-Fi works the speaker works trackpad works it was clicking fine it's moving fine sure enough I mean the screen doesn't have any dead pixels there are no cracks there are no like ghost type shapes from the back yeah and the body is really clean so this is a pretty good candidate alright so just finished installing the OS on the source hard drive. We're gonna go ahead and shut it down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install Cinebench R15 as well as the CPU. So once again this is a, a 2.66 uh, core i7 it's an M620 it's a, so it's a first gen i7 the graphics on this is a GT33M, it's a mobile, pro mobile graphics card of course, it's on board and it's a 2 core 4 thread. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do CPU tests. Wow that is a terrible score. Okay, so um, if those of you who are not familiar with Cinebench R15 specifically, a score of 169 for the CPU is really, really bad. I mean, there are Core 2 duos that get scores, I mean, I'm talking like even first, second gen Core 2 duos that get in the, the high hundreds, low 200s. So the fact that it's got 169, that's with 8 gigabytes of RAM, even though it's not like a RAM issue but like this system is not held back in any way so that may be an apparent sign that there is some inherent flaw currently in with the, the motherboard so now let's do the graphics card it's an OpenGL that, that's the name of the test so we'll be doing a graphics card test right now and let's see if it goes all the way if it does go all the way it means that to some extent the graphics card is still functional if not fully functional 
and if it ends up stopping or if it doesn't start at all uh, that is a clear sign that there is something wrong with the graphics card so for those of you that are not knowledgeable of the graphics problems that these computers have it is said that the see there you go it just shut off so it does have a graphics issue I'm gonna go ahead and try that test with a higher wattage charger because maybe the battery sometimes is not giving enough power for it to do its regular function and the charger is a lower wattage charger even though they're both working together just so that I eliminate all of the possibilities all right so we got an 85 watt charger let's see if it makes a difference at least at this point I believe that when the system is being overloaded which you can probably tell throughout the video the light turns green from charging it just goes to green so I don't think at this time it will do that let's just do a RAM reset anyway I'm curious to see if the the CPU score changes with a higher wattage charger because maybe the battery I mean these laptops are, are old it's a 2010 laptop so it's a 10 year old battery it's probably the original battery uh, these batteries are not meant to last this long um, they're lithium-ion batteries so what I'm thinking is we'll do the test all over again but with a higher wattage charger this will be a good test just to see if there's any difference in the functionality as well as for the graphics card funny enough it's moving slightly faster I'm not sure if it's gonna make a difference but we'll try it nonetheless so actually the first thing I want to do is I just want to go for the graphics let's see if it makes a difference so before when I clicked on the OpenGL program to run, the charger turned green. So let's see if it makes a difference this time. It's still orange. So this video could end up going to one of two ways. What could be done if this doesn't work is that I would need to do a reflow of the graphics card. So that would be a part two. Yeah, so it, it didn't change. So there is a graphics card problem. I, I currently do not have the setup to repair this uh, motherboard today, so this will be part one. I'm gonna do a part two probably in a day or so, attempting to repair the motherboard. So what happens is they say that the solder joints uh, in between the graphics card and the motherboard were of a mixture that melt at a lower temperature than the typical solder balls that are used in computers so I don't know why in those years they used um, solder balls that melt at a lower temperature but the significance of that is that these machines are an aluminum housing and what happens is that they do not dissipate the heat as well as other computers that are plastic right they, they kind of retain the heat so what that does is that on top of not only keeping the heat the boards themselves run very hot specifically over here and they get up to a temperature where they can melt those solder joints and if this laptop is on a desk and you decide to move it or you end up finishing your work and you close it up put it in your backpack or whatever you end up doing with it it shifts it that much the graphics chip on the board so that's one possibility that happened here but sure enough, most of the time it just rises, you know, like if this is the board, this is the chip, it just rises a little bit. And what I end up doing is I just end up reheating it to just reconnect all of the solder joints. And sure enough, ends up working more often than not. But sometimes it doesn't end up working. So this will be a part one. Part two will be the repair, the attempted repair of this motherboard. And if the motherboard doesn't repair it, it'll end up turning into a scrapping video. So I'll show you all the parts I retain, like one of my first videos showing how I scrap computers, how I retain the valuable pieces, and how I recycle for their commodity value the remaining pieces such as the aluminum housing and other such items. So thank you guys for checking out the video. I'm sorry that it wasn't from beginning to end like a problem than a resolution. But this is part one. Keep a lookout for part two. If videos like this interest you, Please feel free to share it with your friends, like the video, I would really appreciate all the support, subscribe to the channel, and uh, keep a look up for my future videos. Till then guys, thank you so much.